Good morning, good evening, guard this ever-expanding now moment. Welcome to the Pleiadian Essentials Show in association with Pleiadian Express Productions. This is your host, Bridget Rao, with my co-host, Rockin' Larry Lockin. And today we are going to be interviewing psychic medium Leslie Irene Kane. She is uh, part of my spiritual community here in I live in Carver. We're actually coming live from Shanti Shali Yoga Wellness Center in Plimpton, Mass. Uh, she's been in this area for a long time. She's been doing this work for a long time. She has an awesome background here. Um, I'll give everybody a little bit of a, a rundown on who she is. She's a longtime fourth generation spiritual teacher, a medium and intuitive healer. She started studying metaphysics at the age of 13, has spent her lifetime dedicated to the enrichment of one's soul through spirituality, metaphysics, and esoteric wisdom. She shares her spiritual gifts of clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, and her intuitive wisdom along with her joyous outlook on life as she empowers her clients and students with tools and spiritual insight to enhance their divine connection to loved ones here and in spirit assisting them in developing a deeper understanding of one's own soul in context of the greater spiritual universe. Leslie has clients and students throughout the nation and abroad. Leslie's work has been validated by police in murder and missing persons cases, and she has also worked with Hollywood celebrities and famous musicians. So with all that being said, thank you for coming on, and how are you today? I'm well. Thank you for having me, Bridget. And we want to say hello, Larry. How Hi, are you? Larry. Hello. Hi, Larry. Thank you from for having the, me. You're welcome. Hello, everybody from all the way out here on the West Coast. Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you for joining us from the best coast. I, oh, mean, yeah. I mean, the West oh, Coast. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So today is going to be a little bit different because... Um, a little bit out of my element here. We're actually doing this in person for one of my, this is my first time doing a show like this, and it's kind of got a different flow to it, a different energy. But I'm going to do my best um, by sharing the mic here with Leslie in person. And I just wanted to ask you to give everybody a little bit of a rundown on where this all started for you. Mm. What is your story? Sure, my story. So I grew up in a very, uh, I went to church every Sunday, was brought up Protestant. Um, there are lots of um, ministers and um, spiritual people in my background. The more I did my genealogy, the more I found people on both sides. And um, my mom was a little bit out there, you know. Um, she was into astrology and all, all kinds of things. And I grew up in Belmont, Mass., which is a very conservative town. And um, when we were thir when I was 13, my parents bought a cottage in Gloucester, Mass., on the North Shore. And the lady down the street became my mom's good friend. And she was teaching um, astrology and psychometry and how to connect with angels and past lives and all these things. And this was back in the 60s. So, um, and I was a teenager, had nothing else to do, couldn't drive, too young. And um, so I tagged along. And so uh, I began really studying at that point, and I had really great teachers, and a lot of them were the big famous authors of the time, and I didn't really realize who I was hanging out with then. I was just like, you know, hey, they're friends, they're family friends. And we would go to, it was, what was really great was we would go over to their house and hang out, and there'd be like four or five of us, and someone would be teaching, and then we'd go to a bigger class, and then... Everyone would share what they would know. And so then we would go into Boston, and there would be like a 1,000 people um, at a lecture. And these were my, my mom and my parents' friends. So um, it was just really interesting. And it wasn't until I really got to be an adult, like in my 30s, that I realized the real gift I'd been given by having all these amazing people around and just sit and have tea. Uh, I'll give you an example. One of my um, astrology teachers was Francis, Francis Sequoyan. And her books are still out there. And so I would hang out at her house or whatever. And so one day we came, my mom and I stopped by for tea. And she's like, hey, yeah, this is great you stopped by, but I just got to let you know I'm going to get a call from the government sometime this afternoon. So it was just like normal for us. Uh, she had been hired by NASA to chart the days when before man went to the moon. 
Uh, she would chart the astrological days when sending up the rockets would be had the potential to be more successful. So we're just having lunch and the phone rings and it was back when the phones were attached to the wall in the kitchen with the long cord. And so she just said, oh, yeah, that's the government. So she went around the corner, shut the door, and about half an hour later she comes back and just resumes and talking and private stuff. But I was in junior high and I'm only five feet tall. I was not going to go in junior high and say like, hey, what'd you do this weekend? Well, you know, astrology and hanging out and um, all this stuff. So, um, but it was really interesting to realize how great these teachers were. They're real pioneers in each of their areas. And I was really blessed to be able to study teachers and to study crystals and crystal healing from one of the women that wrote the, the great handbooks on it. Um, and to study every day for um, for you know every summer when I was there, so it was really great. So I want to thank my teachers, you know, too, and my, um, for all their wonderful support that they you know they gave me um, over my teenage years and until they said you know you can go and do this. We've taught you all we know. Um, that is that is awesome um, to have that type of realization later and to not even know at that point. So. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine like how cool that would be to like look back and be like, oh wow, well yeah, my my teacher taught you know was giving out the code co like the information needed to to make successful stuff with right. NASA. Like, and she was actually um, been invited to one of the um, the liftoffs that they used to have in Florida. Okay, so that was really cool. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. yeah, yeah. To be right, to be right there in that and watch that go up, you know the. You know. So when they're with that, with that type of stuff, were they looking at it from a metaphysical point, or were they looking at it from like a scientific point? They were looking probably for more like scientific. Okay, this weather, this day is going to be better, but um, because I think that everybody who does metaphysics and to know knows that you have to kind of gear your vocabulary towards your audience, so exactly where their understanding would be okay. also. But someone there had to be connected, or she wouldn't have been asked to do this, right? Right. So, yeah. yeah. There yeah. must have, and yeah. and for her to be that type of teacher, she must have been looking at it from that point of view mm -hmm. too. Like, well, you don't want to do it on that day because mm -hmm. Mercury and you know. Like, <laughs> Probably not when Mercury's in retrograde. No. <laughs> no, we don't want to do that then. But but that's really cool to know about. So you've had all these awesome teachers over the years. Yeah. Um, I, can I just share one more story? Yeah. That one of my teachers. Um, you know, we live right down by the beach in Gloucester, and so one of my teachers, you know, had been teaching, and she said, meet me down the beach, you know, after everyone goes home around 6 o'clock. So I went home, you know, came came back the next day and met her at the beach, and she, I said, what are we going to do? And she said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you how to affect energy. I'm going to teach you how to affect weather. I'm going to teach you how to move the clouds. So, and that was very, very symbolic of anything else that you want to do in your life and moving energy. So we did, and she showed me how to do it, and you know she picked the right kind of day with the clouds and everything, and we used our, our positive energy, and we moved the clouds. And so it was just really awesome for me to learn, to realize that our thoughts and our feelings and our emotions create an effect in the world. Right. You know, that um, whether it's people around you, whether they're conscious of your energy or not, that we're having an effect on each other when we're all connected. So that was a really great, great memory. Right, and yeah. and I I know that feeling because I I well growing up as this point you know that we have YouTube, but I had seen videos about that and I was like oh I wonder and I did it and I'm like mom mom come here yeah, like, yeah, come look what right. I can do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you're right and yes I love your perspective on it about how it would affect you know me and my little limited thinking about it I was like I can move clouds I wasn't thinking about the big impact so that would be cool to have that teacher to show you that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and then in my house, um, we were all kind of mediumistic, but it was very kind of low key. Um, I can tell you a story if you want. Mm -hmm. um, we had a dachshund dog named Pretzel, the bane of my, uh, my my existence because when she she was older, she bit my kids. But um, but anyway, so uh, but she was great, and uh, <laughs> she she passed a spirit. So um, my dad. My dad said to my mom one night, my mom's wa walking through the room, through the living room, and my dad's sitting there watching, they used to have like the um, Thursday, uh, Friday and Saturday night movies of the week or something on. And so my dad's sitting there watching a movie, and he's like, Tina, 
I just saw a pretzel and I heard her walk across the, the floor and I, I, I could hear her little claws on the, on the, on the wood and it's like she was sitting right in front of me. And so my mom just stops and goes, now George, look at the clock. It's 5 of 11. Where else would this dog be? Well, the big joke in our family was that my dad never got to see the end of a movie. Always had to go to the bathroom. Oh. So my mother's just been used walking through the room and she. Um, it wasn't until he was older, but he expressed a lot of past life memories that he had shared, uh, that he had, he had experienced. Um, and um, my mom's a little bit more psychic than mediumistic. She kind of gets ticked off at me that I can actually see my grandmother when she comes to visit. Okay. And my mom's like, why can't I have that experience? And I'm like, because you have to be quiet and still long enough to be able to feel what you're feeling. But she's just like really intuitive. She told me something the other day, and she's like, you need to call so-and-so. Because her husband knows someone that can help you with that. And I called my friend, and she, I, I told her what my mom said, and she goes, oh, my God, she's right. <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know, my mom's 89. It still goes on, you know. And it's kind of like just she'll say it in the middle of a sentence, and she'll be right, and she'll just move on. So it's really very interesting. This is an interesting family. And, and the more that I came out of, not like the closet, but um, – my aunt said, you know, when your uncle sees things, and then I went and talked to him, and, you know, so some people didn't want to talk about it so much, but um, other people were really, you know, forthcoming, and as soon as, you know, I talked to my uncle, then he's talking to me about what he saw, and he was more comfortable with it, and um, I got lots more, lots more stories if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I mean, I definitely want to hear more about, so you, you said you looked into your background, like your, your family tree, mm -hmm. and, and so you you know you're like a fourth generation. Yes. Yeah. Um, how did you find out that information? A lot of it was from family members. My own grandmother was very intuitive and very um, very spiritual. She used to stop in the middle of the day and go and read the Bible. And she used to tell me when I was really little, she said, you know, I used to go and try to sit in the bedroom next to her when she was doing it. If she was babysitting me, and she'd say, no, no, no you don't understand what I'm doing, and I would see all this color and light and people and whatever, and I'd be like, yes, I do, you know, and um, so it was just a knowing that everybody had it and knowing what to say and, you know, what your special gifts were, you know, and, um, and to know you don't really talk about it, um, like you don't go to school and talk about it because I had, it was almost like um, a knowing uh, who would understand you and who wouldn't. Right. Mm -hmm. I find that a lot with um, people, especially from the past generations, that they, even though, like, people we've talked to recently on the show, they'll say, well, my mother or my grandmother or so-and-so, like, they had that knowing that they had that connection, but it wasn't discussed openly like mm -hmm. it is now. Right. Um, and it's still, there are some families out there who aren't really, like, on board with that. You know, they mm -hmm. don't want the whole the whole neighborhood to know about it. Because mm -hmm. they feel be? like... Um, so one of the things that's needed, and it's one of the things, one of my um, my purpose in life is, is to educate people. So I feel like the more education people have and understand how and why the, um, spirituality works and how we are always connected and why they can feel what they're feeling and how that is possible, then it takes the fear out of everything. Right, and I think that's very that's awesome way to do it because a lot of times people don't understand, so they do shut it off. You were talking a little bit earlier about how high school was for you. Um, <laughs> do you want to give us a story about that? Sure. Um, well, in general, it was um, not the most comfortable place because I'm also empathic, and that's really a lot, very much heightened with me that I can really feel when I tune in what it feels like to be someone else and how they're wired and how everyone's wired differently than everybody else. So, for example, if I'm doing a reading with someone, and, you know, something about, like, their husband or their sister comes up or whatever, I'm able to say, well, they're wired this way. So if you communicate going down this, this path with these words more than the way that you're saying it now, they're going to be able to connect with you. So um, being able to feel everybody's stuff and learning how to just be able to stay in your own private little aura and zone, that, that took some time for me. Um, 
it was like being in the classroom and you could feel everybody's energy. It almost, and it looked to me almost like, you know, like with Star Wars with the lasers and the laser beams and stuff. It would look like that. It was like, you know, that person doesn't like that person because they said something else. And it'd be like, you could see the lights going back and forth, you know. You could see who was nervous. You could feel who was nervous. And um, so it was very, um, it was very interesting to know that I was probably the only one that was seeing this stuff. And um, so people kind of probably until I was a senior thought I was pretty quiet. I wasn't shy, but it was just like there was so much energy to kind of manage walking through. And I was learning, you know, using my use my discernment how to really deal with that and be able to be me and feel their stuff and still stay in my own kind of comfort zone. Right. So you were actually like visually seeing their their energetic cords hitting each other and stuff like that. And that's, mm -hmm. I can't imagine what that would have been like because I was already quiet in school anyhow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Larry, did you have any questions that you wanted to ask Leslie about? Yeah, I started to, but I think she answered um, pretty much for me. I was just wondering about the stigma on the stigma on this sort of work now versus then. I mean, she mentioned that um, you knew who to talk to and who not to talk to when you went to school, but I was wondering how adamant maybe um, your, you know, your mom was or your parents were that you don't say certain things to certain um, people. Were they very adamant about it, or I were think they? My mom, yeah, I think my mom was pretty. She was pretty. Um, she was pretty brave. She would just, you know, she was um, also into astrology a lot. And so I don't know if you've ever seen like the Long Island Medium with her family, like her daughter and, and um, Teresa would be going to the grocery store message. It was kind of like that stuff, that, that same kind of format for me. Because my mom would see someone walking down the street, and she's very chatty, and she would talk to someone, and she'd say, well, you must, you must have something in Aries because you walk with a bounce in your step. You know, and I'd be like, oh, my God, my mom, could she just be quiet and just move? You know, like, just keep talking, just move, you know? Um, so I think that um, in the community that we're in, you know, you could, you could more be yourself. And it was a lot of like-minded people. We would go out to tea together and, like, after a lecture and hang out, kind of like we do now. Right. Um, but I feel like there was still, um, it was a very conservative town. And that, um, a lot of these people were kind of like the foundation that people nowadays are kind of stepping, stepping into. And it's already been done for them. So um, there was the stigma, and I remember when, like, Shirley MacLaine came out with the book Out on a Limb, and all this stuff was mm -hmm. on TV about it, and she's crazy, and all this stuff. And my question was, like, how can they not get this? How do they not understand this, you know? And that kind of still surprises me today when, like, newscasters will say, well, do you think there's something like, you know, that, that there's something to all this, or think there is life after death, or something, I'm like, you yeah. know, how do you go through the world and not know this, you know? Exactly, especially 50 years later, you would have thought, or 30, 40 years later, you would think people even in the mainstream would be, you know, in tune with this by now. It, it really can be frustrating, yeah. And I'm a big fan of Shirley MacLaine's too, you mm -hmm. know. Um, are you familiar with the, <laughs> the Seth material at all and Jane Roberts? I really wasn't too much into that, but that's kind of something – from around that time, and people, I think, got caught up in the stereotype of seeing somebody like a Jane Roberts, you know, wig out while she's trying to read the Seth material and, you know, things of that nature. But yeah, it, I, yeah, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't more into that, but I, um, I just feel like there is a big difference now, and right. there's still a lot of. I think people are really um, growing at their own rate, and that's something that needs to be respected. So for me, whenever I do a reading or I'm working with someone as a student, it's being able to kind of tune into where they are and letting that be okay. And then um, using the vocabulary or the energy or the way of teaching um, that can kind of help them grow from where they are now to the next step. Um, but I feel like, um, you know, there's a lot of still, there's a lot of places that are still very conservative. And I think you just kind of have to use your spiritual wisdom on what you say and how to use it. Because um, someone, we, I was having a discussion with somebody the other day about, like, um, if you go somewhere and, you know, you see spirit around someone, do you just go up and give them a message, something like that? And my, my beliefs might be a little bit different than other people. 
but I feel like there's a way to connect with someone that you can say something that can validate to them where they are. And so you're kind of passing on the message in a generic way, too, mm -hmm. if that's what needs to be done. Um, because for me, I've, um, how do I say this? It's wonderful to give someone a message. And the other thing, too, I'm also a minister. So um, I know that with grief and um, going through loss, sometimes being out in a public place can be the only place where someone's holding themselves together and they got their mask on. So I feel like you've got to be careful if you do that on how the person emotionally is going to be after they leave that place. So I think there's a lot of responsibility that goes with doing something like that in public because um, we've got to make sure we're doing it for the right, the right reasons to help the person. And, um, but I, I was, I was kind of like meditating about that. It was like, well, when you get that energy though, and, and you really feel the push to do that, to deliver a message, how can one do that? And so the answer was kind of bring it to a generic level about, gee, you've got really great energy about you, or you must, you know, you must have lot, lots of love in your life around you, a lot of loving support. And that might open up a, with a response from that stranger that then gives you permission to kind of go in and they can receive it in a more balanced way. So I, I feel like that's something I'm always working on because, you know, you do see stuff around people all the time if you're mediumistic. Well, not all the time, but you can. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like that actually I'm happy that you said all that because sometimes when I'm out places, especially lately with my mom being in the hospital, there was this one woman that I kept seeing and there was a message for her, but I was, I felt like she was, like, they wanted to give her the message so bad, right. but she was just, like, very, like, closed off. Yeah. So I never approached her because I it just felt standoffish, but it was like it was getting a big push from one side and a mm -hmm. block from the other. Right. So it's like, what do you do? And yeah. that's perfect. So do you think you could have found a way, like, to meet in the middle? and said maybe something positive to her? I think, yeah, I think okay. that would have been better to open yeah. it up because she, she, I think her personality too, like she seemed like someone very right. closed off and angry. Right. And, and they're just trying, if they're in a situation like that, they're trying to hold themselves together right. and compute what's going on. But this was kind of like the, an <clears throat> excuse me, the answer for me that satisfied spirit too. Like I'm delivering a message, but I'm doing it in a way that maybe the person, it's respectful to where they are too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people are open, and then that's okay. Um, but then, what do you do with, with someone like what Bridget was saying? What your you were experienced? Like, how do I bring that through? Because spirit would really like me to do that, and not wig this person out too, or add more of a stress to their day. Right. And so it's kind of like finding that happy medium in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a medium. As a medium. <laughs> hey, if <laughs> I could ask, if here. I could. If I could ask the two of you both this, maybe, like, you were talking about that situation, Bridget, um, and maybe even Leslie. Have you ever been in that situation, though, and just wondering, when should I make a move? Like, and not so much, okay, well, how should I approach this person subtly, but when should I make a move? That angst of when should I make a move and maybe make that initial thought or contact towards them. You know what I mean, if that makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I think this is it's a similar it's similar You're freezing, you're totally cutting out. Hello?
are we on the air? Lots of friends. Oh, hey, Bridget. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. I was so excited to hear your answer, and then it completely froze out the whole time. Okay, so she's going to clarify now. Yeah, I just want to clarify that, you know, um, I'm not against people going up to someone that they really feel um, pushed by spirit and giving them a message. Um, I just lately have been kind of asking for guidance on what I can do when I get the feeling that someone may not be um, open to just kind of like, hey, I'm a medium and this is what I do. How do you give the message to someone that needs a message they may not be into, you know, mediumship. And so that's what I was talking about, where how can you kind of translate the message in a positive way for that person so that they get that love and that support from spirit without them thinking they're going to, like, you know, an uncomfortable place where they're not familiar with, like, you know, how people call it, like, way out. So um, that's what I was talking about, too. Okay. Did okay. you hear us that time? Yeah, totally. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so basically, I wanted to touch a little bit too. I know you you said before that you can't divulge too much information about all of the um, the work that you've done with helping the police and famous people. But I know you probably have stories that you could share a little bit of information without giving names or too okay. much. Um, let's see. In regard to um, one of the murder that I worked on, um, I can say that the one thing that I thought was such a gift from the person that had passed his spirit um, through being murdered was her attitude. It was very much very casual and very much, um, hey, let me tell you what happened. And so in this hour of the, you know, the time when I did my work, she told the whole thing. And um, this was back in a time when police really weren't, you know, it, you couldn't just go, hey, I, this is what I do. You know, now police departments work with this kind of thing. But it was the attitude um, that she came through with. And it was like, you know, I'm fine. This is my story. This is what happened. And to know the part that I think was, is very healing to others who have lost people, no matter how, that they've transitioned to the other side, is that they don't feel as connected to the pain. They don't feel connected to the tragedy or the trauma. They're good. And there, there was such a sense of calm and owning who she is as a person and a soul from the other side when she came through. And she also talked about what was going on with their children and the children in school and all these other things that, you know, there was no way that she could have known about, you know what I mean? Like, I could have made up. I didn't know about this stuff. And um, just that feeling that, you know, this is what happened. This is part of my Earth story. And to feel that energy that we feel more in spirit than we do in here, everything is dramatic. Like, even trying to connect with you, Larry, and get all the technical stuff right, you know, we're starting to get a little bit stressed. I mean, I yeah, everything can affect us when we're here. Right. <laughs> so, but to know that, you know, this is an earth school we learn, and things have to spirit, and it's not such the big deal. It counts. We love our family. We're still connected. But it's such a, a place of centered peace. Um, and there's such a disconnect from the pain, whether it's an illness, or in this case where it was murdered, uh, a murder, um, that really, it just really helped me as a medium to know that it increased my faith mm -hmm. that the place that we go to is such a peaceful place. And we live this life as experience, and that's, that's kind of like what it is. It's experience. So it would be like one of us talking about what happened to us like in second grade and telling a story. She was telling part of her story. And it wasn't her whole story. It was part of it. And that was the part that was such a gift. Wow. And that that's really awesome to hear. Um, to hear that it goes to that type of level where you're not, not coming back with, like, oh, the victim mentality right. and all that. It's mm -hmm. just you let it go. Mm -hmm. um, in the back of my mind, I have all these questions going on, though. It's like... Can I just say one thing? Sure. At the time, the police were looking for one person. Okay. There were actually three involved. Oh, wow. And she told me that. 
And so the information was given at that time, but, you know, that was considered like way out there. And it took three more years, but they got everybody. So it was solved correctly, but she solved it in an hour. So <laughs> it was like, she's like, well, let me tell you a story. And here it is. It was that simple. And so that was just amazing to me. Um, so how, now, if there was three people involved, did, were they all involved in the actual act, or was it, okay, because I was wondering, like, if you, it, once you're on the other side, you can act, go back and know what their, their prior actions were. No, that okay. was, yeah, she just told the whole story exactly as it was, and it was all validated later. Oh. So um, the family did go to the police with this information bit by bit, and then I would get phone calls back on, you know, all the validation and everything. So now it's a little bit different. Hey, Leslie, awesome. if, I can, if I could ask real quick, has anybody from the other side ever mentioned maybe or discussed what it's like to be outside of the body? I mean, as far as if they, if they feel lighter, of course they don't feel any more pain, but have any ever expressed any relief yeah. to be outside of the body finally? or? Yeah, um, yes, um, when it's their time to go or like even in a near-death experience, um, there's a sense that this vehicle that I was in does not belong to me anymore. There's a real disconnect from that. And there's also, before someone passes, they're really, you know, when someone sees at the end of life, when you see someone um, struggling to breathe, they're really outside of their body. Uh, this is what I believe and what have I, I've experienced, is they're out of their body already. And what you're seeing is almost like if we on the earth um, took all our computers and phones and TVs and pulled all the plugs out when they're turned on. You would see them all kind of go from the picture on the TV slowly down to black. That's what you're seeing um, with the person's body that's going on. They're really out of their body. They're, they're with angels that are helping to cross over. They're with loved ones. And that process starts, you know, um, subtly and, and with grace. Um, the grace is amazing. And, um, but there's a disconnect, like, hmm, there's that thing I used to use, you know, and they know they're connected to it, but it's such a disconnect, it's very different. It would kind of be like, um, let's see, you know if you went to McDonald's for the drive through and you got a hamburger and it's in that container, right? You eat the hamburger and then you throw the container away. You don't obsess over the container because you're done with it more. So it's, I can explain it that way. That's been what they've explained to me. And also, I just want to clarify something, because I hear it a lot, and I used to a lot on TV like 20 years ago. Nobody gets stuck in the tunnel. <laughs> it really bugs me when i like, did they get to the other side? Yes, they do. And one thing that I've had a lot of, a lot of people from Spirit come to and say, it was almost like, um, you know, they see the light and they feel it, but there's an energetic that goes with it. It's kind of like, um, how do I describe this? You know when you, um, the suction on a vacuum? Well, if you can think of it as very subtle like that, it's like there's a pull. There's literally an energetic pull that you're going in the right direction. So there's no way someone can get stuck. You know, I believe we all make our own place in spirit depending on the issues that we worked on and how well we um, how, how kind we were and everything. So all the good stuff we're doing here, all this positive karma, it's also helping to build where we go in spirit um, by, what, by what we believe, by what we've learned, um, by the energetic level of our soul. And we're all connected in spirit. So we also do see our loved ones. But you know there's some people in your family that you love that maybe aren't on the same vibration as you. You're still connected, you can see them, but still in spirit, like attracts like. The still laws laws are still in, in play there. Okay. So I want to know a little bit, like, what is your take on reincarnation? So when those souls pass, um, do they decide at one point, okay, I'm going to come back? Yeah. Okay. I, and I think it's funny we're talking about this because um, a, lot of, a lot of my friends will say, this is the last time. I am not coming back here again. I'm trying so hard, and it doesn't seem to make a difference. And that's how a lot of people that do this work are kind of feeling right now. It's like we're putting our hearts on the line here. We're being open. We're listening to spirit. And it doesn't seem to be making the difference, but it really is. So we just kind of have to hang on there. Um, I do believe in reincarnation because I believe that God is good and that this is a loving space that we're all part of. And... Um, 
I believe we do travel like in in um, in circles, so that it's kind of like, well, if Bridget's going, then I'll go. You know, and if <laughs> if if you're going, then I'll go. And if Darnell is going, then we'll oh sure I'll go, and I'll get to swim in the ocean and eat chocolate and whatever. But um, so, but there sometimes is um, a lot of times people will pass and we'll wait till like the rest of our clan gets back. Okay. And then you know we can stay in spirit forever. We don't have to come. But we by coming to the earth plane, we feel everything kind of hard and fast, and we can really work through making more spiritual progress here because we do feel any everything. Someone hurts your feelings, you feel it. You know, you stub your toe, you feel it. You go through um, a, a medical issue, you feel it, and, and you learn something from it. Um, and so as we progress, um, you know, then when we go back to spirit, we can learn there and we can study and we can do what we love there and be with people we loved. And then this usually starts to be a pull back. So it's like, oh, okay, if I go there, it's going to be great, and I can learn this, and I can work on forgiveness, and, you know, you'll come with me, and you'll teach me to learn forgiveness, because you'll do something that I'll have to forgive, <laughs> and, you know, and I can play in the, you know, play in the ocean and come to, you know, do this and eat chocolate and have dogs and cats and whatever else we want. It sounds really good. So we set it all up, and then we get here, and we're like, oh, okay, <laughs> this is what we signed up for. Oh, my gosh. With my kids, I used to say, um, I used to tease them, and, you know, I was always throwing the metaphysics around, and they would just roll their eyes. But I would say, hey, because you know, the kids would complain, we're having chicken for the third time this week. And I'd be like, you know, when you got in line for a mom, you knew you were signing up for someone that didn't cook. She was dancing on stage in a dance group at Carver Dance Center, and she was doing all this metaphysics. So, um, and they would just kind of roll their eyes, and they learned to cook. So, um, and they're great cooks. So, um, you know, I do believe in reincarnation uh, carnation because otherwise, if you look at life, how to see some of these people that just seem to like um, do not care about other people's feelings or something, and they're just golden. You know, they don't seem to have any big problems or whatever. And then you see all these kind people that are just struggling for finances or whatever. And so I feel like um, there's lessons that we take on that sometimes we really can't understand all the um, the deep and depth levels to until we get back to spirit. But I do believe that, you know, life is good no matter what we're going through. And um, we just have to keep going one foot in front of the other, especially nowadays. That's an awesome take on it. Um, and I think that's funny because I'm like the same way. Like, I don't cook. <laughs> and I signed up not to. <laughs> I used to. I just, mm -hmm. you know. I don't. Yeah. It's like our priorities have changed a little bit, yeah, right? Yeah. We want to put totally. our energy somewhere else now. Yeah. Can I also go back to like one of the things that I worked on was with a missing child, and uh, I think this is unusual because what we did was I was I was told that he was missing. I was given the description. Um, I was told kind of like the state he would be in because um, he had left Massachusetts. And so what I this is kind of what I do in with my energy work, which makes me a little bit different than like some some mediums because I combine everything I've learned. But I started sending energy to the child. And I told him where to go, to go to this certain safe place and to call. And I kept sending him the energy that it was safe, that no one's mad at him. And within a day, he had done that. He went to the exact same space. Oh, my God. So we know that energy and thought travel, mm -hmm. people do pick up on our energy. And um, that's why distance healing works. That's why you think of somebody and then they call you, you know, or you bump into them in the store. And it was just so amazing to be able to harness that energy um, because this is what I've learned from all my teachers is to build that spiritual muscle so that when you send energy out, it does really go to where you sent it and it has a positive result. So that's what I do with clients too. We can work. It's not therapy or anything, but we kind of work with setting the tone on things, putting the energy with you know, my energy and their energy going in the right direction with the, you know, asking for the highest and best. So whether it's like working, you know, trying to buy a house or working on a relationship or, you know, going spiritually deeper and unfolding your spiritual gifts. So um, there's a lot you can do, but it's almost like going to the gym at first. You know, um, you put the energy out there doing the affirmations or whatever. It's like a three-pound muscle. You know, when you go to the gym and you see all these guys lifting like two or 300 pounds and you're like, oh, my God, how can I do that? But you start small and you just continue to do it on a regular basis. So that's 
that's that was that story and that that worked. That's you know? that's really awesome. And how cool is it that he went exactly where you? I mean, I I could see if you went somewhere else and called. You know, had to be a little, but you went exactly where you said. So that's the part that's of that awesome. was working on shifting his energy on the sending it. You can't ever change anyone else. Mm -hmm. That's a big lesson for everybody. But you can change. You can send light. <laughs> We're all laughing. It's a whole list Damn of people. <laughs> um, we all would do it. I'm sure there's a lot of people that were on their list too. So, um, but you know, you can send the light, and the light goes to their soul. So when the light goes there, if the soul can use it, it will. Otherwise, it releases it. You know, if it was that person's lesson, maybe not to receive the light, not to receive the thought, maybe it wouldn't have worked that well. But it did, and I was really grateful that it did, that he was safe and he came back. That's awesome. That's really awesome. And even just sitting here talking with you, mm -hmm. I can feel a shift, like, in the energy. I feel warmer and, like, tingly and just hearing those, like, I'm, just, I'm learning a lot just listening to you. And I can feel yeah. it. Um, thank here, you. Here, I love here, teaching. I, I like agree. Nice talking to Do you <laughs> You feeling warm and tingly, Larry? <laughs> yeah, a little bit more, more at ease, more relaxed. Yeah, definitely. Good. Good. Um, so when you walk into a room with people and you see energy and all that stuff, do you see like family members walk in with them, or do you have to connect? Um, a lot of times, I kind of I've learned how to harness that and kind of shut it down. It's like if I'm not working, not so so much um, <clears throat> Christmas time on a Saturday night, you know, the week before Christmas is last week, and I was <clears throat> sitting there, and this gentleman was sitting next to me, and he looked like he was in a lot of discomfort, and I could feel that really, you know, and I had to sit there for like an hour, and I was, you know, sitting there waiting. I was early for my appointment, and um, so. Hey Bridget, can like you? You've got to get the medical checked out too. If someone stress, use your gifts. It's learning. Yeah. Hey, you're totally lagging really big time. In fact, it sounds like you're speaking. The last two or three minutes, it sounds completely on air like you're speaking in tongues. It's really funny. But not funny for the show, but... <laughs> um, that was well, weird. Spirit. Yeah, you're going to love hearing that on the replay, but that was, uh, that was, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, how are we sounding right now? Good. You sound you sounded good right there, yeah. Okay. So we're gonna touch a little bit 
did you understand what she was saying up until what yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Ask all anybody else to step aside right now. <laughs> Right. Um, let, let us, yeah, let but, us have um, our chat. But to know that, you know, spirit should not be, it's not normal to have spirit bothering you 24-7, trying to, you know, get you to give messages to people or bothering you when you sleep. It's like spirit is very respectful. So, and you are the one that is in control because you're in the earth plane in the body. So if that's happening, you can tell them, no, not now. You know, a lot of times I'll get woken up with information because I'm in the middle of writing a book. And I'm like, I, I had to just say, you know, okay, this is great. It's amazing information, and I'll think I'm going to remember it, but I won't. So I have to say, you got to give this information to me when I have time to write it down, and I'm, I'm alert and awake. Right. So you're the one in charge. They're all part of your team, your guides, your teachers, or angels. We don't come to this earth plane by ourselves. But um, we're the one in the earth body. So... hear me? Yes, Larry. So, um, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you now. It was doing it again, though. It, it, it sounded like um, your voice was like playing a piano. It was. It, that's the best way I could describe it. I, I was hearing her talk about being, um, you know, if they're waking you up in the middle of the night, you, you can tell your you know, guides and your team to kind of back off and give me this information at another time. And then it started going into that um, weird mode again where it sounded like your voices were speaking at piano or something. It was crazy. Okay, so we're going to try again. Um, and you wanted to touch on... Um, yeah, that we come here as a team. Um, we don't come to this earth um, alone. I think God or the universe, infinite spirit, whatever you want to call it, is very loving. And we come with guides and teachers, and guardian angels, other angels. And um, the guides and angels, you know, they can change from time to time. But part of what I've learned and what I teach is to, it's okay to tell your guides and your teachers and your angels what it's feeling like to be you, to be the person in the body as part of the team. So that, because they look at our lives like we have everything, because we have you know, we have friends, we have a roof over our head, we have food. And you might be going through a really hard time, like, you know, a loss of a loved one or some kind of struggle, financial. So <clears throat> part of what's good is to just let them know what what is really going on, to let them know what it feels like. And this is what I need. This is what I need help with. Right. They're still having a little hard time hearing us. What if I yell, Sif? Can you hear me? <laughs> a little better. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Leslie has a very high energy. Um, yeah, oh definitely. Yeah. definitely. So, I mean, let me see if I can get this one to work again. Okay. Um, we're, on, we're on my laptop and my so I have to uh, mute this mic real quick. And we're coming. Here it is. Okay. 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 <laughs> wow. This is a good one, huh? <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, I can now. Exactly. Just roll with it, yeah. <laughs> So this is what so happens good. when you interview a medium. All of the spirits come through and um, 
interfere and do you so you were able to clarify um, was there anything else that you wanted to touch on did you want to bring through a message from spirit <laughs> um, put her on the spot okay well I have to say when I walked in around you or when you got out of the car you know we pulled it in the driveway at the same time you had so many <clears throat> angels from the healing temple and I don't know if you know anything about that these are angels that were assigned to the temples in and um, in um, in Greece back in in Egypt back in, in Babylonia back in the temples and they're called the rainbow healing angels and they emanate energy almost like that piano music we were hearing um, it's like color but color was sound oh, wow. and they were all around you and I feel I felt like oh it was for someone she loves very much that's having a health issue right now so I felt that with you. There was so much love and protection, um, but I really did see all that energy moving. There were like five different angels, all emanating different, almost like colors of the rainbow. And the energy is actually like where we picture angels as white. It was all like colors moving through like what we consider what angels wear, like the white garb. So um, oh wow, there's a message. Well, that that's really awesome, and it does resonate a lot for me. Um, the past couple of days. I've been like really called to like Egypt stuff and I've been hearing Ra and, and all this other information and we're actually talking with um well Sif is listening in, but she is the Rainbow Angel four 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 on on our um Are you kidding on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, so for you to say Rainbow Angel, I was like, Oh okay. um, and you know <clears throat> yeah, so How cute is that? that is really cool. Um Larry, are you still there? Can you hear us? Yeah, I'm there. I was just thinking when you guys were cutting out, when I was hearing that weird that we, we were hearing that weird monotone kind of voice come out of you, it sounded just like angels kind of singing. And what Leslie said really resonated because it really that's that that's kind of I think what was going on. If that makes any sense, it was that's really that's strange, but so all, awesome. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for that, and, and I think. Um, and I think um, one thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, sometimes people are afraid to come for a reading. And I, what I've learned over the years is the reading they get is what is necessary for that point. So it may be very different for someone that's studied metaphysics or, you know, does work and they come for a reading. Um, and someone has had a first time reading. Sometimes it's very different. Spirit is very loving and comforting and supportive. So no one ever has to be afraid. Um, you're going to get what you what you need, and the spirit's funny too. And I think a lot of times people that have lost someone, they're afraid to come because they feel like they're going to have a breakdown, you know, and they're never going to stop crying. But spirit comes through with a lot of with humor too, and things that they would know. So a lot of times it's um, it can be a very supportive tool along with everything else someone's doing. So and you don't have to always have someone that's just passed to come for a reading. A lot of times it's it's information and it's support for what you're doing. A lot of times they will bring through information that you know, but they'll, they'll and they'll say, well, yeah, okay, that was nothing that I can relate to that really makes a big difference in my life. But spirit's validating that you're on the right path because mm -hmm. here it is. You right. know, we know what you're doing. So yeah, <laughs> and that's perfect. And I just want to say, um, I saw Sif make a comment that she loves this woman and she's real. So I. I wanted to relay that to you because I know you're not seeing um, the comments that go by. Um, but we are, um, we have a few more minutes left. Uh, is there any other story or anything that you wanted to talk hmm. about? Or, Larry, do you have a question you wanted to ask about anything? Yeah, I, oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I just wanted her to maybe um, touch a little bit more on, and go to do a little bit more depth on her thoughts on Shirley MacLaine. What okay. any thoughts you might want to share about Shirley MacLaine? Um, I feel like she was very brave. That she really was a way shower in so in so many different arenas. And what I think is interesting is a lot of times we see this with Oprah. Um, a lot of times spirit brings a person um, um, step by step out through the public domain and. You know, there's the love and the following, and then spirit gets to like the real main reason that they're working with this soul. Like with Shirley, it was like the out of the uh, out on the limb book, and with Oprah, it's going more into the spirituality and then having her own 
um, her own show on the OWN network. But it's like spirit just famous, famous, but it's about what you can do with, with that energy once you harness it and get there. Think of all the people that Shirley McLean, and everyone thought she was crazy and everything. But it did put that energy out there, and it was little bit by little bit more acceptable. And you can see now, maybe like more ghost hunters or any any of those things. Those and you didn't talk about all this stuff. Really knew that it was a safe environment for you. And you know, my kids are mediumistic, and they all have different gifts, and they all use it in different ways. Some don't, and that's okay. Hey, but they're all kind of tuned in, and when when they were little, there were all kinds of stories going on, and you know, um, so it's it's just very interesting, you know. Um, so I would just say that it's really the more education you have on this, even if you're very, very in, you know, even if just intuitive, and um, you know. Um, Developing your intuition, even working in business helps because if you can feel what you're feeling coming from someone else or some common ground, it's worth developing it, even if it's that way. So, um, not to take advantage of anybody, but to make it easier so that you're both working on the same page. It's great to have it for business, and it, especially what we're all here for is going into the soul. And to be able to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with that is perfect. Um, well, I we know we're getting to the end of our show here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have you let everybody know how they can get in contact with you, learning more, whatever. And I would love, I know Larry probably would too, and Sif to have you back again in the future so we can talk more about your stories and stuff. But sure, I'd love to. For now, let's uh, let everybody know where they can find you. Okay, my my Facebook page is Leslie Irene Kane, um, and um, my email is Kane K A N E dot Leslie at Comcast dot net. So if you like me on my um, Facebook page, you can um, keep up. I try to educate on that page too, and then it also shows events of where I'm going to go. But I also do readings over the phone and. Um, Teach over, the, you know, like I teach. So I know you have some events up. coming up too. Um, uh, you're going to be at Blue Angel Healing on June at, 10th. I'm blue at Blue Angel Healing on June 10th with um, English medium um, Andrew D. Mm -hmm. We're doing a day in the life of the medium where we're going to be talking about our lives, uh, being mediums, and people can ask questions if there's questions you ever wanted to ask a medium. And then we're going to be doing some gallery readings too. And I'm at Shanti Shala on the 26th, uh, doing again. Um, so ch and check my um, Facebook page for, or email me, and I can I can give you um, the event um, dates and, and times and places. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much. Oh, she has oh, one more. Moonstruck, Moon, Moonstruck Matildas this this Saturday night <laughs> at seven in uh, Norwell. Okay. And is that another that is that's that a with, gallery with Liam? No, nope, that's nope, a gallery. That's, that's just you. me. Oh, just nice. me. Got me all to myself. Nice <laughs> for two hours. And um, so and I just want to say one more thing. Yeah. Okay. My guides work quickly. So um, if you come, you know, if uh, I can't guarantee you get a message, but um, that's my intention is to reach as many people accurately as I can. So it may not be a huge in depth message, but usually my uh, my guides work pretty quickly. Awesome, and I'm looking forward to the 26th because I'll be here that day, so I get to watch. Um, Larry, are you there? Do you want to let everybody out there know how they can contact and find you in this wonderful world? In the wonderful world of the Internet. Yeah, I'll make it real quick here, okay? Instead of going through the 40 groups or 20 pages or my website or anything like that, I'll be real simple and real quick. If you want to find out anything about me and... The, my website and the couple of YouTube channels I have and the different groups on Facebook, go to Pleiadian Groups and Pages page. There is a Pleiadian Groups and Pages group, which I created. Don't go to that one. Go to Pleiadian Groups and Pages Facebook <laughs> page, and you can see every goddamn group and 
page that I've got. You can also find out where we're at on Twitter. Um, and like I said, check out our website, our YouTube channels, and Google Plus channels. And yeah, that's about it. That's Pleiadian Groups and Pages. Pleiadian okay. Groups and Pages. I think I said that. Larry, did you figure out the name of your website yet? <laughs> Pleiadian um, Express Productions Expresso or um, what yes, is it? Ple I, yes, I did. Pleiadian Express Production. Yes. Again, it's go to Pleiadian Groups and Pages, and you can find it on there. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, that makes it a lot easier for you. I yeah. I can be found at my page, Bridget Rao, um, uh, Divine Essentials, Pleiadian Essentials Show. I also help out with Larry in some of the Pleiadian groups, the Northeast. Um, I'm in a... I'm in a whole bunch, and I was just added to a bunch more. So you can find me all over the place and through my website, BeCreativelyYou.com. And I just wanted to say thank you again, Leslie. And I know we're going to have to do another one of these. because Sounds great. I just thought of more stories. Okay. <laughs> An hour just definitely, right. you know. We want people to come back, you know. And, and Thank you for having me, both of you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Leslie. Thank you Larry. It was great. Hey, Bridget, you've got to, make sure, thank you. you've got to make sure to listen to the replay after we're done, though. I will, I will. I want to hear all the oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, so do you want to give a big cosmic kiss, Larry? With that, we're going to send everybody away with a big cosmic dating game kiss. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Mwah. Mwah.